Xbox just posted a 20 plus minute long podcast video discussion about the future of Xbox and exclusivity and the leaks and rumors were correct. There are going to be Xbox featured games coming over to other platforms, which then begs the question, what games and how and when? Well, within the podcast, Phil Spencer and team did not mention the four games coming over to the other platforms, but we have some information already out there that seems to line up exactly what they were talking about. Because we initially saw the leaks of it being Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Grounded, and the Master Chief Collection, which on this channel were very Halo focused. So seeing Master Chief Collection possibly coming over to PlayStation would have been quite the experience to say the least. The thing is, those are leaks and rumors. And I think now that this information has come out, we have a little bit better idea of what's gonna be coming to PlayStation and potentially Nintendo. Those games being Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, Sea of Thieves, and Grounded. Again, we see Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, and Grounded mentioned again when it comes to these leaks and rumors, but Pentiment is the first time I've seen this one being mentioned as an Xbox game come over to the other platforms. If you guys like these Xbox news and informational videos, make sure to tap like and subscribe to keep yourself update, and let's get right back into those details. Now, why these games in particular seem more legitimate than others? Well, because of what Phil Spencer and team said on the podcast, talking about one, a live service game that's mainly Xbox focused coming over to other platforms and saying that they need a community on that game for the team to continue to develop for that game possibly being Sea of Thieves, which would be like the live service game I'm thinking of that would be somewhat popular. And when you look at the list of the top 50 most played games on the Xbox platform, you got to scroll quite a ways down to go see Sea of Thieves right down here. In fact, far more people are playing Halo Infinite than Sea of Thieves, which is kind of surprising, but also kind of understandable. We'll also mention that one of the games coming over to the other platforms is a game that they don't really view as like an Xbox type of game. That is likely part of Pentiment because Xbox never really like, pushed this game a whole lot. It was kind of like a side game that was kind of added into one of their yearly review showcase kind of videos, but this game has been very well received. Pentiment is a game that was made by Obsidian and is overwhelmingly well received with a 95% well received rate on Steam alone. And another great game to kind of share out to the public to get more people to jump in and play. To show like, hey, Xbox has some great IPs. You just need to get a chance to play them. And a game like Pentiment, probably not getting a whole lot of attention. So having it available on other platforms, say Switch or PlayStation, would really help grow that brand of like great titles coming from Obsidian, showcasing that Xbox Game Studio has great games. And Phil also mentioned about a game that came out recently, about a year ago, that would be great for other platforms being, well, what game that's really well received by Xbox that came out, well, officially a year ago now at this point, Hi-Fi Rush as well. People have been loving this game. People have been putting inside like it was game of the year or quality kind of game. Again, another great game to get out there for people to play because I don't think Hi-Fi Rush would really have a huge player base to get people continually playing the game. So you get a real nice push of population right there and grounded as well. It's been actually very well received as on top of that. And I guess maybe not a whole lot of people are playing at the moment as you don't really see them on the top 50 of the most played Xbox games. Surprisingly, no Halo on this list. And from what Phil Spencer and team said on the podcast, it didn't really sound like a Halo title would be coming to PlayStation anytime soon. If there was going to be a title, I would definitely say it would be the Master Chief Collection as that's just quintessentially Xbox experience. You put that out for the people to play, people will love it. It already has a decent player base and Halo at the moment, it really isn't like the most popular thing. It's not like a cool new thing that Xbox is doing like they are with these current titles right now at the moment that are most likely come over to PlayStation and Switch. Xbox and 343 are also pivoting away from Halo Infinite, which I wouldn't expect that to come out to PlayStation or Switch anytime soon as they're probably more likely to focus on the new experience coming over for the Halo franchise, but who knows when that's gonna release. 343 is also still going through some major shakeups and changes when it comes to how they make their Halo games. We all know about the famous layoffs that happened at the beginning of 2023, basically cutting all of the campaigning animators. And that's why we see Halo Infinite kind of struggling to get content out and cutting on things down like seasonal cutscenes and having some more crazy experiences to be played with in the game. And right now we're seeing Halo Infinite really being propped up by the Forge community to have more content to be able to play as we just had that BTP refresh edit in, which is a great time. I have a video on the channel. If you guys want to check it out after this one, I'll link it. Though, personally, I would love to see Master Chief Collection come to PlayStation, maybe even Switch. I personally also love to see Infinite come over to those platforms as well. 
But I think at the moment, 343 and Microsoft are really trying to focus on like what they want to do with the franchise and how that integrates with their models moving forward rather than trying to do too much at once with the franchise and just focus on the next Halo experience. We also saw some great news of Diablo 4 being the first Activision title announced to come to Game Pass on March 28th, which I'm super excited about. I am so glad I did not buy Diablo 4 on Steam sale. This is opening the door for the next wave of new Xbox Game Pass titles to be added in, which then begs the question, what about Call of Duty? Diablo 4 isn't even a year old yet. It released back in May of 23, so why wouldn't we see the next Call of Duty title to be released on Game Pass? Supposedly, it's a Black Ops game that is set within the Gulf War era back in the early 90s, which that would definitely push subscriptions for the Xbox Game Pass brand. Talking about Xbox Game Pass, Phil Spencer and team also confirmed that Xbox Game Pass is staying on Xbox. It's not moving over to PlayStation. It's not new, moving over to Nintendo, which I think is the right move to make. It seems like the Xbox team want to use some titles specifically to be able to put on other platforms to show like hey we have some great titles over here how about you come over to this side of the fence and jump into the game pass subscription and all that stuff and test out what is there because the hardest part for people is to get people to just jump in and play this thing in the first place but once you get them to play it you can get them pretty easily because like a lot of the titles like we were talking about with hi-fi rush pentiment sea of thieves and grounded are all very well received games but maybe just kind of lacking that population because they're tied to xbox but being tied to xbox definitely still seems to be the play for them because they said that nothing's really changing when it comes to the exclusivity model that they currently have with xbox which was a big concern when it comes to the community at large we've even seen some articles talking about timed exclusivity with potential games like indiana jones and starfield but phil spencer team did squash those narratives saying that Indiana Jones is going to be on Xbox day one. Now, is it going to be a timed exclusive though? They didn't really delve a whole lot into it, but, but from what it sounded like and the tone that they were kind of presenting within the podcast, it definitely felt like it was going to be, this is going to be an Xbox game and say an Xbox, same thing with Starfield. The rumors of Xbox moving to more of a publisher role rather than a platform role that they currently have right now. They said no, because we still have a great hardware coming along the way. That kind of alludes to the Xbox update that we're gonna get, I think, believe, probably announced at the June showcase this year, where it's just like a greater version of the Xbox Series S and X. Typical console refresh that we see with every generation. And of course, didn't really mention anything beyond the Xbox Series consoles if they will continue on. We'll just have to wait and see what that happens with that. It's not like Xbox doesn't make money on selling consoles. If they didn't make money on consoles and having that as a platform, well, then they definitely wouldn't still be doing it, as Xbox has been a very solid thing third place when it comes to the most popular consoles compared to being Switch being number one, then PlayStation, and then Xbox. I feel like this announcement is one to try to change the narrative of things that was going around. Like these leaks and rumors were going around all over the internet at this point. You could definitely tell that this was, which is kind of control the narrative a little bit of what's happening with it. Cause some of it's true, some of it's not true. And I think Xbox did an amazing job of that. I'm just kind of letting you go like, hey, what you're hearing is true to some extent, but we're not ready to showcase it yet. I think also two as a way for them to kind of admit like yeah we're just stuck in third place and we need to kind of start branching out a little bit more so then people get to experience the great stuff that xbox has to offer this looks to be the right play for xbox at the moment and trying their best just to get people into the ecosystem which has always been the hardest thing for them to do in north america xbox does great outside of north america it's really struggling so with the activision acquisition that happened recently and this change to some exclusivity could be a sign of things moving forward but we'll have to wait and see and of course, we'll talk more about it on the channel once we get some more information about it. Thank y'all for watching.